The Star Wars franchise boasts an expansive presence in the realm of entertainment. It's one of the biggest movie franchises that sees millions upon millions of dollars at the box office. Each new television show is met with critical praise and commercial success. As for the video games, it stands as one of the biggest failures of the current generation, and it's all thanks to EA. We're early into 2019 and the publisher has already caused an uproar in the gaming industry. In just a little over a year since shutting down Visceral Games and cancelling Ragtag, EA has cancelled yet another Star Wars game. Under the codename Orca, this was the game that was reworked from Ragtag, and it didn't even make it past early development. Strap yourselves in folks, this is going to be a salty video. Supreme Leader, I take full responsibility- General! Our strategy must now change. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. In light of Orca's cancellation, the gaming community has restarted the conversation on whether or not EA should lose the Star Wars license. Let's cut right to the chase. Yes, and a thousand times, yes! He should be removed from office. Since securing the rights with Disney back in 2013, EA has managed to spew out two Star Wars games, Star Wars Battlefront in 2015 and Star Wars Battlefront 2 in 2017. Both were online multiplayer shooters that employed scandalous business practices in order to maximize profits. Battlefront 2015 not only demanded $60 for an unfinished product, but it also wanted $50 for a season pass, a season pass that finally made the game feel like it should have been at launch. There you go, we're out here chasing money. As for Battlefront 2, the game was originally built around a pay-to-win economy, forcing players to buy loot boxes in order to obtain high-level ability cards. It took about a month of anger from consumers, government officials, and eventually, Disney themselves. The Emperor does not share your optimistic appraisal of the situation. EA shut down its microtransactions mere hours before the standard version of Battlefront 2 launched. At this point, it's safe to say that EA has squandered any opportunity it had to make a good Star Wars game. Yet, the disappointment doesn't stop there. Oh my! What have you done? In addition to launching two of the biggest disappointments of this generation, EA has cancelled two single-player Star Wars games. The aforementioned Ragtag game was to be a single-player linear adventure. At the helm of the project was Amy Hennig, who had previously written and directed some of the Legacy of Kain games, Jack 3, and the first three Uncharted games. With a name like hers attached to a project, you can almost guarantee the game is going to sell like hotcakes. As one would expect, EA wasn't happy with the game being a linear adventure and decided to cancel the whole thing. EA's CEO Andrew Wilson insisted Ragtag wasn't cancelled because it was single player, but because it wasn't following trends in the market. Sure, EA. Sure. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Not only did EA cancel the project, but they also shut down Visceral Games. Assets were then handed off to EA Vancouver so that the project, now Orca, can follow more closely to what EA wanted. An open world game that'll make players want to come back and enjoy for a long time. Hey, that's code for live service. And now, that game has been cancelled because it would take too long to develop. Side note, how could a major gaming company not realize that an open world game with space travel would take a long time to develop? Are EA really that incompetent? To explain, but not really explain the situation, EA released a statement following reports of the cancellation of Orca. Quote, There's been speculation overnight about one of our Star Wars projects. As a natural part of the creative process, the great work by our team in Vancouver continues and will evolve into future Star Wars content and games. We're fully committed to making more Star Wars games. End quote. I'm gonna stop you right there, EA, and call BS on your fully committed pledge. Here's why. Execute Order 66. In 2016, Rebel Galaxy developer Double Damage Games put together a patch for what could have been an exciting space shooter, where players could pilot a variety of Star Wars vehicles. The footage showed the player switching between the Millennium Falcon and an X-Wing during an explosive fight against an Imperial Star Destroyer. Double Damage clearly had a vision, but EA didn't want anything to do with it and outright rejected the game. There's one bounty you're never gonna collect. To their credit, maybe there is something in the contract that forbids EA from partnering with studios outside of the company. However, until we get confirmation on this detail, we can't forgive EA for passing that opportunity. 
Double Damage is now reworking the game into Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, set for release later this year, and already it looks amazing. So you can be sure as hell we're going to be covering that. More coming up here on The Grinder. And let's not forget the handful of Star Wars projects that were in the works from the now defunct LucasArts, including the nearly finished Star Wars First Assault and highly anticipated Star Wars 1313. The EA deal was signed only a month after the closure of that studio, so EA had the perfect opportunity to pick up nearly completed projects that would have been far more ready to ship sooner. Yet, they chose not to, in favor of their own titles. And what have they got to show for their own titles? Two appalling online shooters that have soiled the brand's reputation as a gaming franchise. EA has five years left to belt out something decent. We only know of three games in development. In fall 2019, Respawn will launch their awkwardly titled Jedi Fallen Order game, which still hasn't revealed any gameplay, not even a logo or concept art. Then there's Capital Games' Star Wars Rise to Power, which is a strategy game for iOS and Android. Like we don't already have enough of those. Too many losses. I can't take any more. As for this third game from EA Vancouver, who knows what that could be? Allegedly, it'll have a small enough scale for the game to be pushed out sometime in 2020. In other words, don't expect anything impressive. I'm not afraid. Yeah. You will be. From everything we've covered, one can see why Star Wars fans and gamers alike are crying out for Disney to pull the plug. Even the writer of Rogue One, Gary Whitta, is calling for the license to be revoked. I would take the license away from EA, because it's been, it's been catastrophically mismanaged. Unfortunately, EA won't be losing the license. Not immediately, anyways. We're not going to attack. I have my orders from the Emperor himself. He has something special planned for. Disney and EA signed a 10-year contract. If Disney truly was shopping Star Wars to other studios, it would have done so back when Battlefront 2 was dragging the brand through the mud. You may dispense with the pleasantries, Commander. I'm here to put you back on schedule. On top of that, finding a new studio slash publisher on short notice would mean a long wait before we got to see another Star Wars game. It's too late for Disney to spend the time and money just to terminate the deal. EA, on the other hand, would be facing a serious dilemma. Not only would a revocation force three more games getting cancelled, but more studios would be at risk of shutting down. Both Disney and EA would most likely suffer major financial losses, and many people would lose their jobs. Great care we must take. At this point, the best option for both parties is to ride out the remaining five years without stepping on anyone's toes, before the contract expires on May 6th, 2023. Wait, Nico, what?! The lesson to learn here is that EA doesn't seem to care about Star Wars. The publisher has proven that it cares more about brand recognition and profit margins than shipping out quality products. After all, EA themselves labeled Battlefront 2 a disappointment due to the game selling only 7 million units. Their target was 8 million. Ignoring their shady business practices and the fact that their game forced countries to change their gambling laws, upon shutting down Visceral Games and canceling Ragtag, CFO Blake Jorgensen made a blindly ignorant remark that players, quote, don't like linear games as much today as they did five years ago or ten years ago. You gotta cut the bridge when you realize you can't make a lot of money on something. End quote. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. Keep that in mind that Jorgensen stated this in late 2017. That same year, Horizon Zero Dawn, Persona 5, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Super Mario Odyssey had accomplished impressive sales numbers. The only single-player game EA had whittled away that same year was Mass Effect Andromeda, a disastrous mess that put the Mass Effect franchise on ice. Sorry, my face is tired from dealing with everything. 2018 would further disprove Jorgensen's notions thanks to the monumental successes of God of War, Marvel's Spider-Man, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Hell, it's only February and 2019 already has two Game of the Year contenders that are single-player titles, Resident Evil 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3, both of which are already reporting strong early sales. Jesus, stay back! EA has made it clear where its head is at. If it can't be heavily monetized and made with a little effort, why put it out? However, there is a possible solution. If they haven't done so already due to an NDA, Disney could already start looking for other studios to release a Star Wars title after the May 2023 expiration date and sign a new deal granting rights to release a game after the current deal has expired. Five years would certainly give someone else a lot of development time to make a big Star Wars title. So, who else would be better for the Star Wars franchise? 
Well, since we do specialize in lists on YouTube, it is therefore Mojo Play's internet duty to provide you with the top five companies who should be allowed to use the Star Wars license. Here looks like you boys have seen a lot of action. With all we've been through, sometimes I'm amazed we're in as good condition as we are. Number five, double damage. Considering we already talked about their space combat pitch earlier, this is a no-brainer. Number four, Insomniac Games. Given their recent success with the Marvel-licensed Spider-Man and their sci-fi adventure series Ratchet & Clank, they have the potential to give audiences an exciting adventure game, perhaps one starring our favorite smuggler and an ace pilot? Number 3. Devolver Digital They've been eager to take a crack at Star Wars, even going so far as to tweet out their resume to the Star Wars Twitter account. Number 2. Ubisoft Say what you want about Ubisoft, but they're proven to have the in-house resources required to tackle a multitude of Star Wars titles under different genres. Number one, literally anyone else. I mean, come on, it's Star Wars. What passionate game developer hasn't dreamt of making a Star Wars title? One that isn't sabotaged by dumbass business decisions. You're definitely the one. Yes, EA should definitely lose the license, but it won't. There's simply not enough time left for Disney to spend additional resources in finding a new partner before their current contract expires. Disney's best bet is to start preparing new deals to go in effect after May 2023. Mark your calendars, people. Assuming Disney is smart enough to not renew the EA deal, May 7th, 2023 will be Star Wars Redemption Day. What is it they've sent us? Help. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.